In this second group of five works, I've gathered all those that could be called the expansion of the need to specify, which had begun in the piece for solo clarinet. Somewhere along the line, I realized that too little of this complex fragility was known. I needed to explore it more, playing the music myself. This need to have a deeper contact with the instrument I was writing for continues to this day. Some of my instruments I inherited, others I bought, others I bought, and still others were given to me as gift, but I can never have too many. Now many of you probably already know the cycle of four solo soprano sax. The most interesting thing about this piece is not much the obvious exploration of the instrument as the exploration of the very edges of the acoustic vibration to the point where it could become light, remotion or denser material. For the first time here I can speak of truly falling in love with a quality of sound. The whole work grew out of a biker played completely by chance. But something kept pulling me back to play the sounds again and again. It was a kind of physical necessity, which is why I speak of falling in love. And this returning was the basis for the entire metric structure of the cycle. In fact, the very idea of the cycle is based on that returning. Let's listen to the beginning so you can understand what I mean by falling in love. This piece I also based on a metric structure, but one deriving from the physical characteristic of the instrument itself. It is no longer an overlaying of abstract pitches, but rather the real sounds of a harmonic series altered by fault fingering. Whereas in Empedocle the metric like was generated by the harmonic matters, in Necessita this is done by the so-called planets, seven to reference figurings. So let's listen now to three fragments of the second, third and fourth parts to get an idea of where the music went next. The continuity with the sound transformation, characteristic of the second part, the presence of tight bikers in the third,
the reawakening of an enormous controlled energy in the fourth. Poetically speaking, I was referring to early last 40 years spent in his tower in Tübingen, seemingly mad. A listening telescope pointed at the sky as is done in the middle of the ocean. The more I worked with these unconventional fingerings, these sounds among the conventional sounds, the more I became convinced of the existence of another dimension of sound altogether, something between listening from the outside and listening from the inside, which appeared as an intense presence beyond my rational comprehension. Here is the beginning of the avvicinamento, or approaching. Three studies about the third center, with four saxophones this time. First, astonishment, three tenors, baritone. Second, path, alto to tenors, baritone. Third, contact, soprano, alto, tenor, baritone. The title, Exibasien, is a fragment from Heraclitus, a single word left suspended by its lack of context, although it suggests a space-time image. The existence of a place and an implied time to reach it. The quartet proposes an interpretation, indicating not only a specific place of the acoustic space, but also the space contained inside that place, a space in which even the relationship to time changes. The mouth of the four saxophones were conceived as four entrances to a space beyond the visible one, a space linking them internally, a word within the world, like that studied by contemporary physics, or whose essence is described as resonance without percussion in the Chandogya Upanishad from around 600 before Christ. This takes the form of a progressive materialization of an enormous presence coming from who knows where. This is my most ritualistic work and thus hard to break up, but nonetheless let's listen to the beginning
In the background, there is again a fragment of a poem by Hölderlin, in this case, Tinian. Some flowers don't grow from the hurt, but sprout in loose soil of their own will. Counterlight of our days, nor should one pick them, for they stand golden, prepared only for what they are, leafless even, as thoughts. As from the depths of the piece for twelve, Empedocles, I rose back up to a more conscious surface in the piece for five, Due Lune, Again, I wonder if it were possible to keep something of that word within the word in a more fragmented, almost instantaneous form. Around that time, I obtained a grant from the Japan Foundation that allowed me to spend two months in Tokyo. There, with no more than a tenor recorder, I ended up with Edo no Ana, the Edo Flowers. The name of fires that periodically destroy the ancient capital Edo, present day Tokyo. The piece aims to suggest the burning power of the instant as well as its lightness. It's a cycle of nine short pieces divided in three triptychs one third, fourth, sixth, seven, ninth for a total duration of about twelve minutes. Through successive transformations, the original IQ structure, 575 syllables, becomes the metric structure of the whole cycle. From level to level, from the entire length of each triptych, of each piece within the triptych, of the parts in each piece, and so on to each instant, the inner relations become more and more complex, although they may seem totally free on the surface. Let's listen to the first triptych. 1. Pale purple blossom. 2. Around the bright face. in the summer bush.
So I had gone from a cycle of 67 minutes soprano sax to one of 12 minutes. Was it possible to apply the new speed of transformation found in Aidan Noana to the soprano sax and fly through the broad scale of its cycle like a bird? I tried this with Ultimo Alato. Originally conceived as an encore, it eventually became a complete piece on its own. Here the principle of flight has generated an articulated technique that aims to simulate the wonder of flying. Had in mind Leonardo's flying machines, the enthusiasm for flying, the disastrous falls and variations of a project as old as mankind. It occurred to me that it's something that perhaps can only be grasped intuitively, alato, that is to say, sidelong, out of the corner of your eye, or your ear, I thought. Let's conclude this second group with a further compression, a 72 seconds piece, a new beginning. is an opening, the whole energy of a future wide cycle for three recorders, two violins, harpsichord and cello, sprung from its starting instance. A microbang, a fertilized seed, a koan. L'altro is its consequence for two alto recorders, three minutes and 22 seconds. Later we will see why this cycle was interrupted and where it was deferred to. I was driven by a new urgency to verify the existence of that word within the world, an instrument that I had not used for years. In the third group, C, there is a series of music for strings grouped into two cycles. <laughs> 